This video was made possible by Skillshare. Start learning new skills with a free trial by being one of the first 1,000 to sign up at the link in the description. This is a video about skiing. Now, you see, I, Sam the narrator, love skiing. But my writer, Adam, who wrote this script, hates skiing. And guess what, folks? Writers have all the power. Just watch. I, Sam, believe that skiing is dumb. The only reason I do it is because I'm insecure about how cool Adam's hobbies are. Also, I will give Adam a raise. This is a legally binding promise that is valid in court. Now that that's out of the way, here's a picture of Kim Jong-un riding the chairlift at North Korea's Masi Kyung Ski Resort. Now, this picture is odd for two reasons. First, because by riding the lift, Kim the Tool Man Taylor is actually doing a thing instead of looking at a thing, which historically is his favorite activity. And second, because it's really weird that North Korea has a ski resort in the first place. I mean, ski resorts are a luxury usually reserved for wealthy enclaves of America and Western Europe, plus Japan, for some reason. Skiing just isn't a budget-friendly sport, so why did a country that can barely afford a ski ball build a ski resort? Well, there are three kind of reasons, and one big boy reason. The first kind of reason is that despite what you might suppose from his size or body shape or whole general vibe, Kim Jong-un loves skiing, which he learned to do while being educated in Switzerland. Seeing as Kimothy Chalamet famously loves bringing stuff to North Korea that's usually reserved for rich Western countries — cars, nuclear weapons, Dennis Rodman, etc. — it was only a matter of time before he brought in the old, overpriced slip and slide. The second kind of reason, and the one that the government always says publicly, is that it supposedly gives average North Koreans an opportunity to enjoy one of the finer things in life. But considering most North Koreans aren't even able to enjoy the regular things in life, and many aren't allowed to be alive at all, call me crazy, but I think the North Korean government may be fudging the truth with this one. The third kind of reason is the same reason that every four years the world has to pretend they care about bobsledding — the Winter Olympics. You see, when South Korea hosted the Winter Olympics in 2018, North Korea went all annoying younger brother and tried to copy them, hoping they could hold an Olympic event in North Korea. That didn't happen, but they did field a joint North-South Korea women's hockey team, proving that when the Koreas come together, they can do anything, including being outscored 28-2 across five games. But the final reason, the big boy one, is as a sanctions workaround. You see, North Korea has been in international timeout since 2006 when they began test-driving nuclear flying boomsticks, leading the UN Security Council to ban North Korea from basically all forms of trade with other countries. Except, that is, for tourism. So while North Korean people can't afford to ski, rich Chinese tourists and the smattering of brave and rich European and American tourists who aren't afraid of being auto warmbeard can, and that's who primarily uses the resort. This foreign tourism is especially useful because North Korea is desperate for foreign currency. Their own currency, the North Korean won, is about as valuable as Neopets' Neopoints, so if they can get their hands on US dollars or Chinese yen or European whatever they're called, they want them. But, you ask, shouldn't those same sanctions stop them from being able to build a ski resort in the first place? And it turns out that you, the hypothetical question-asking viewer we invented for transition purposes, would be right. In fact, the UN has explicitly barred North Korea from importing luxury goods. Nevertheless, Kim persisted, which was made possible by a glaring loophole. The global big brains neglected to define what actually counted as a luxury item, and in lieu of having a list, just decided that each nation would figure it out for themselves, opening the door for Kim Possible to simply claim that ski gear wasn't a luxury. Now, while most countries just responded to such claims with an, uh, yeah it is, the government of North Korea's closest ally, West North Korea, had their back. The backbone of North Korea's ski resort, the chairlift that Kim's straddling in this photo, came from China. It's actually an Austrian ski lift, but Austria didn't sell it to North Korea. Instead, they sold it to China, who then sold it to North Korea. It's the type of genius workaround the UN never could have seen coming, and when the rest of the world says, hey, why are you letting North Korea have nice things, like they did at the 2015 UN Security Council panel, China just says, well, those aren't fancy things for fancy people, but normal things for normal people. Also, we're China, so, like, literally come at us. Now, this may shock you, but it seems that the idea of a profitable winter tourist destination in the world's most unwelcoming country isn't panning out the way North Korea hoped. The DPRK has stated that the resort hosts 70,000 visitors a year, which is actually pretty impressive, except for the part where that's definitely a lie. 
If we take the going rate of North Korean overestimation, about 10 times higher than reality, then the area would see about 7,000 visitors a year. An estimate that would line up with visitors' account of a nearly empty mountain that offers $40 lift tickets in a country where the per capita income is less than $2,000 a year. So in sum, North Korea has a ski resort that's built for its people except that it's not, it's a big success except that it's a failure, it isn't legal except that it sort of is, and most importantly, the unified Korean women's hockey team has a long way to go. While skis are bad, you know what's good? Skills. You see what I did there? Skis, skills, they sound the same, you know, like it. Well, maybe I'd have time to write better lines if I got more productive by taking my friend Thomas Frank's new Skillshare course, Productivity for Creatives, where he walks you step by step through building a productivity system that works for you, this time specifically for people aiming to do creative work. If you're already a productivity whiz, maybe you can use some of that productive time on any one of Skillshare's other great courses, ranging from illustration to filmography to creative writing to photography to how to make the perfect grilled cheese sandwich. There are a number of different options on topics and skill levels, so you're sure to find something perfect for you. To get a free trial, be one of the first 1,000 to sign up at the link in the description.